The first trailer of a new Asian American coming of age rom-com movie called Love Type A has just dropped. David, we're gonna show you the preview of the trailer. We're gonna give you our feedback and then go through the comment section. Let's get into it. Let's run the clip. Surprise! You are going to Taipei. Like Taiwan? <laughs> we want to give you something special. It's going to be the perfect summer. Hi! Hi. I'm Sophie Ha. Like, haha. I, I never. Do you go to college? Um. Are you excited for the summer? I've never seen any guys you like. <sighs> Do you not like to talk? Um, I don't really know if excited is the right word. You are here to learn and experience your cultural heritage. Parents send their kids here because they think it's a cultural program, but we're all here because we know what it really is. Stop! One big party. This is Ever. You should ask Ever out. You're single, and she struggles with social skills and making friends and stuff like that. It's perfect. What? Catch you later, Ever. Bye. Rick. Maybe this trip is your chance to let loose for a change. Live a little. It was good. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm Xavier. Ever. Forever, ever? Where are you going? Oh, what about curfew? Hey, Ever, remember that crazy fun night when you followed the rules? No. Exactly, because no one ever remembers those nights. If I just let go. Wow, the city is just... Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can't show the whole thing because it's going to track, but we can show an additional supplementary clip, Andrew, that was uh, a spec trailer that was done a few years ago. Taipei is hot and crowded and muggy, but my roommate Sophie is nice, which almost makes up for the fact that my parents shipped me off for the summer to study Mandarin and get ready for pre-med, and definitely not to dance. Sophie takes me to eat the best street food I've ever had, and we browse the markets trying on the kinds of clothes that would give my mom heart palpitations, but she's not here, and Sophie says we're going clubbing, so I break the first Wong family rule and shamefully pay for my new corset and miniskirt. A few hours later, I lose my shoe before diving into the cab that brings us to Club Kiss which is just as terrible and cheesy as it sounds, except I'm somehow freer than I've ever been. Kaleidoscopic tangles dance through my body because I've faced my fear and broken another Wong family rule, and at this rate, I'll break every single one before the sun sets in Ohio. And I know this isn't what mom and dad had in mind, but I can't help but feel like everything's falling into place and nothing will ever be the same. Now you guys have seen two trailers for the movie, Andrew. Uh, you got to get the gist of it. Long story short, it's a rom-com. It's a love triangle. Who's in it? All right, we got Ross Butler, okay, half Singaporean. We got Nico Haraga, half Japanese. We got Ashley Liao, Chelsea Zong, uh, and then, like, probably some other people show up in it. But basically, the movie is about everybody going on this thing called Love Boat, if you've never heard of it. It's this thing that the Taiwanese government would hold. It's kind of a trip back to Taiwan for people of the Taiwanese diaspora. Mm -hmm. So you would apply and it's always for like younger people you know anywhere from 18 to 23 year olds i think eddie huang in his book he mentioned how he went on it before in the past more taiwanese americans than you think have been on this if yeah. you if you really look into i was it. even someone had told me to try to apply but i think i was already like 22 at the time and also i'm not taiwanese so i don't know if they would have accepted me but anyways david i think maybe i missed out on some life changing experiences <laughs> i found myself in taipei I was by myself in a new place, but I never felt more free. Anyway, it's based off a uh, best-selling book by Abigail Wen, who's Taiwanese-American herself. I believe she went to Harvard, Andrew. We met her when she was casting for this, when this was uh, going into, what, pre-pro four or five years ago? Yeah, and I'm um, glad to see it out, guys. Movies take a long time. It's going to be out on Paramount, streaming August 10th. You can check it out. I guess... Uh, real quick, David, how do you feel about it? Is it for you and who is it for? All right, long story short, guys, there is always going to be a gap between the uh, original source IP, right, which is the book, and then how it comes out on movie, right? right. Because they got to they gotta film the whole thing, get it done, what, 90 minutes, wrap the whole thing up. And plus, there's a lot more considerations in terms of like how marketable it needs to be, right? So right. I was going to say that I do think it's a little weird that a girl, even from Ohio in 2023, is that whitewashed. Mm. You know how when her parents shove the Taipei cake in front of her or Taiwan cake, she's like, Taipei in Taiwan? And I'm like, I don't know because 
Asian American YouTubers and even the milk and cereal guys, they've been popping since like 2005. Yeah. That's like 20 years of Asian American online representation. <laughs> what are the odds in 2023, even growing up in Ohio, you're that whitewashed? So you found it a little unrealistic how clueless she was. I think... I, I see what you're saying, but I think for the story-wise, I think it's very relatable because I think this is for the American audience still, or at least westernized Asian audience. And I think a lot of people are going to at least understand that feeling. You're right. That she probably like in Tai Taiwan, Taipei, where my what? where you guys are from, or right. or I don't even know if she's supposed to be Taiwanese in the movie because I think her last name's Wong, so she might be, I guess, non-Taiwanese, like Cantonese. You know what I mean? I don't know. But if you grow up in an Asian household, <laughs> you hear the names of the cities in Asia all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, and my other, by the way, I'm just going through my criticisms right no, now. No, that's fine. Go through your criticism first. I thought that the sheltered nerd girl and then the hot material like shop till you drop mall girl, they look like the same. I thought they were like the same person for a second. <laughs> and I'm very good at distinguishing Asians. So I was like, okay. Okay, that's a funny That's a funny point. I think that the skater guy, who I guess is played, actually played by a pro skater, and the more straight-laced, ripped dude, they might have too big of a looks gap. I was thinking like Ross Butler, he's super ripped. The other dude, you know, he's got a cool vibe, but he's a skater, kind of high body fat. <laughs> so I'm saying it's going to be an easy choice for Ashley Lau. She's just going to go with the ripped hopper. Well, maybe she connects with uh, Xavier, Nico, the, the skater Japanese guy. Yeah, I got you know some other I mean? thoughts. I got some other thoughts. Are they going to acknowledge that both Nico, Haraga, and Ross Butler are Hapa? Or is it a Henry Golding situation in CRA where they're like kind of Asian passing or like, you know what I mean? They look like about 60 to 65% Asian. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. some Hapas, they just come out looking more Asian. Uh -huh. So they don't ever need to acknowledge that they're half white. Uh, I don't know if they're going to play half white characters in it. You're I right. I think they're playing full Asian. Yeah. I like think Russell Wong well, used to I do think it's going to be assumed to be full Asian. I just don't think that there's going to be a talk of like, yay, and you know, you must be glad because my parents are full Taiwanese. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't know. Maybe they didn't ask And movie. you know what's a crazy thing, Andrew? Uh -huh. We heard from an industry insider that they had to fight to even make them hop up. Yeah. Because originally they wanted to make it a love triangle with at least one full white character. Yeah. That, because the studio, I mean, the studios so, do not believe that full Asian guys and even Hoppers can fully sell. <sighs> you know, I think I'm cool with it. I, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, they're Hoppers and that's great. That's fine. But I'm just glad that not one of them is white. That's crazy that that is, I heard that that almost happened. Yeah. I heard that, especially for Chinese pieces, I feel like there may be more like full Korean actors if it was a Korean piece that the game would like accept mm. that feel like they could carry. Um, guys, this is all like industry talk, by the way. Um, yeah, it's interesting though. It's kind of got some eat, pray, love vibes, right? Yeah, and I think it's cool. Every country needs its love story, man. Vietnam just had one on Netflix. Uh, Singapore's obviously had theirs and Crazy Rich Asians. Taiwan, this is yours. This is the Taiwan love story. I went back to Taiwan and I found myself along with love. Two, one. All right, you guys, we're going to get in our comments section. Of course, our final takeaway. Somebody said, I'm excited and grateful for all the AAPI entertainments coming out lately. This is something that childhood me never imagined would be a reality. Mm. I would say, yeah. I mean, this person sounds, to be honest, like a representation, but uh, I, it's valid. No, I'm glad. I'm glad to see it. Why not, guys? Somebody says, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. Moving to the U.S., I always got, what, Thai? And I'd have to clarify, no Taiwanese. I love Taipei as a kid, and now the world will get to see. Yo, David, I got to ask, and this is taking it to a geopolitical level. Do you think, even now with the movie releasing during this time, when Taiwan's kind of, Taiwan itself, as a political piece between China and America, is kind of caught in this little pickle here, like, do you think this actually makes people more interested in watching this movie? Um, to be honest, not really. I don't know. I just don't think that the rom-com crowd and the geopolitical crowd has that I, much I, crossover I it, on the Venn diagram. I think it helps a little bit. I think it helps a little but bit. But yeah, honestly, I mean, shout out to this girl. If she feels that way, that's great. I mean, I, honestly, she might be overrating the power of a Paramount Plus streaming show. Amen. But we don't know, man. Listen, guys, who knows? I, I can't say. Somebody said, this is the very camp I went to. It brings back so many great memories. I want to go back. I went on Love Boat when I was 18. And when we were growing up, obviously, you know, we, uh, our descent more comes from Hong Kong, mainland China. When we would hear about Taiwanese people going on this program, I was like, what are you talking about? Yo, I thought it sounded pretty cool. I was kind of like, dang, Taiwanese, you got to be Taiwanese to do this, man. Oh, man, you guys got all the cool programs. They didn't do one for Hong Kong. Oh, Hong Kong would never do it. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, maybe definitely. Well, Hong Kong doesn't even have any sort of, um, I guess, political yeah. or. And let's or be honest, China, or China wasn't going to do it like this. Not, oh, not like Love no. Boat. Hell not like Love Certainly Boat. not. This girl said, uh, I went to Love Boat as well. And however, even though some people do have partying and some people do have some love triangles, what about learning more about Chinese culture and learning more Mandarin and how to read and write? Sure. I, those are actually really big things that resonated with me Dave, learning Chinese poetry. It is true that there was no Mandarin being spoken in that trailer by any of the young people. Like there's not a scene where she's struggling with, you know, the no. night market people. Like she was, there was nothing like that. There is one scene where I believe she's writing characters like run or something like that. And then she has, uh, knocks over the calligraphy thing to go out to party. Oh, so there is. So okay, there's her dissing her calligraphy. I, I kind of wanted to see some struggle Chinese. That's what I wanted to see. Right, right, right. Something more cultural, right? Because right, right, it made right. it seem like I was like for a second, I was like, did they film this in America or did they film this in Taiwan? Yeah, I needed to see some night market. I, I needed to see some Bing Long, some you know Beetle Nut, some. <laughs> Um, so I wanted said, to see some Shi Lin night market, some Kaohsiung. Wait, and it wouldn't be in Kaohsiung, but yeah, anyways. Somebody said, uh, I went on the Love, Bro uh, Love Boat program back in 92, and I'm telling you, it was like eight students crammed in each room. It did not look like them partying in a hotel together. Yeah, who knows what the reality is? I'll pop up some actual photos of Love Boat right now. Somebody said, I'm a sucker for all the boys I loved before and Kitty XOXO. I cannot wait for this. Somebody said, uh, actually, I want to give it a chance, but it's f if it's from the producers of Kitty XO, that's exactly why I would not want to watch it. Oh. And then somebody said, OMG, I'm a white woman. I'm just obsessed with Asian American love stories right now. Well, because there, there's so many out right now. I'm so obsessed with Asian American love stories. That's interesting. She's like, I'm just curious about how Asians actually fall in love. Right. <laughs> I've never seen it in my life. I so would imagine it's like the mating ritual of two praying mantises. <laughs> no, um, I, every time I've been on an airplane and I've seen somebody that was non-Asian watching CRA on the... Uh, back screen entertainment. It has been a liberal white woman that reminds me of maybe like an English school teacher. Shout out to the white women out there supporting the love stories. Thank you. Somebody said, looks cute, but this trailer filled me with some sort of melancholy because I never had this life and I never will. Oh. Um, you know, this kind of reminds me of a quote from Elon Musk that he gave recently. And he was just talking about how social media is designed to make everybody feel so bad about their life. Cause you're looking at somebody with possibly better cards than you and their highlights and they're being polished and refined mm. um I, I hope people don't take that away from this you know shout out to you girl somebody said uh dear hollywood can we stop with the love triangles i know this is based on a book but stop making movies about the average awkward girls getting into love triangles sincerely reality no oh, man shout out to linda d i thought a lot of her skits back in the day were kind of like this <laughs> uh, but of like so uh uh yeah no i somebody I, said yeah wouldn't it be way more realistic if the girl was super hot a social butterfly and like a quasi supermodel type getting into these hijinks yeah 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 it does she is no, uh you're, you're talking about in real life that is more logical. No, because she kind of is giving Lana Condor vibes of from all the boys I loved before. And then, uh, so there is like, yeah, I guess like the cute, nice girl who probably overachieves in her math class is like getting in these love triangles. I could see how that appears weird. <laughs> but you know... It's more relatable. It's also Hollywood, man. Whatever. Um, somebody said Xavier's a bit out of shape, maybe. And someone said, well, maybe that's actually how the average guy looks instead of thinking the whole world should look like a BTS member with an eight pack, huh? True. Um, I think the Xavier character is actually played by a guy who is a pro skater. So this guy is not an actor. Right. It is true that guys who act full time, they try to get super lean. Right. Um, somebody just said Ross Butler is hot. Yeah, he, I he guess, is hot. He's hot. He's hot. He's um, hot. And then people were already picking sides saying, I like Ross. I like the long haired guy. And I guess that's really what you want from a rom-com, right? You want the trailer to stimulate the rom-com audience to, to pick who they want the girl to side with. Definitely, man. I think this movie totally has a market. You know, is it, uh, am I going to rush to go watch it? Not for myself, but if I was going on a date with like a Taiwanese American girl, not <laughs> it doesn't have to be Taiwanese. It could be any, you know, anybody actually at this point. I think it's a cute movie. Yeah. I mean, it depends. I think it depends. I could see a girl who's lived a life more similar to this with sheltered academic, yeah. you know, uh, model minority tiger parents relating to this piece even more than like somebody else with a different life. Well, let me tell you this, David. We've been to Taiwan multiple times. We've been to Taipei. 
I'm interested in seeing it. Hey, all I'll I need to know is I need a Jay Chow joke. I need a Jay Lynn joke. Yeah. What else do we need, yeah. Andrew? Yeah, I, I did wish they showed more of Taipei in the trailer. I felt like I didn't see enough of the city. But anyways, I'm sure they filmed it there, of course. So Please tell me there's a version of the trailer out there with MC oh. Hot Dog going, well, I time a, time a, I will. Uh, do you think they're playing basketball at those uh, underground courts? Oh, the under courts the underneath the, pass, the bridge? Under the pass that we played basketball. Anyways, Doubtful. It, anyways, guys, uh, please let us know what you think about the trailer in the comments down below. Are you going to watch it? Share this video with your friends who might want to watch it. And, uh, yeah, that's our initial review. So, shout out to everybody in that movie. Congrats on it. But until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.